What's up everybody, it's the Inhuman one here and today I'm going to give you 10 tips on how to master Cuphead. These tips are for beginners and seasoned players alike and can be used on any difficulty. So if you're ready to dance with the devil and teach him a thing or two, stick around for the next few minutes. Now let's start with the basics. Number 1. Always be snapping. The first tip that's going to make you a better Cuphead player is constantly being on the offensive. Never let up on your attacks. Be relentless. Glue your finger to the X button if you have to. If you're continually dealing damage, despite any other movements or actions you're making at that time, you're whittling down the boss's life bar and pushing forward to the next phase in the encounter. Remember, defense delays defeat. Stay on the offensive. Number 2. Don't be afraid to use your supers. I like to classify the blast into three categories. You have your standard blast, your EX power blast, and the special, which may or may not be an offensive maneuver based on your selection in the equip card. The key here is to remember not to be afraid to use your abilities during a boss fight. Don't hoard all of your abilities until the last phase of the boss fight. In most instances, you will have plenty of opportunities to build up your super meter in nearly every encounter. If you stick to rule 1, you will see that constantly dealing damage to a boss will build up your super meter. Number 3. Adapt your loadout to the situation at hand. Keep in mind that you cannot change your loadout on the equip card during a boss encounter. Be sure to change your loadout based on the boss you're facing. Don't be afraid to mix and match to experiment which shots work the best for you. I personally stick to the pea shooter and the spread shot loadout. The pea shooter deals decent damage and also has long range capabilities. Its weakness is that it is limited to firing in very specific angles and trying to eliminate projectiles with the shot can prove difficult. As a result, I like to complement the pea shooter with the spread shot. Although the spread shot is limited in range, it deals massive damage at close range, especially if all four blasts hit the target at once. There is no need to aim while destroying pesky little projectiles either, which is a great feature. I also like the EX blasts for each of these abilities as they simply amplify the strengths of these blast types. Keep the bosses guessing and constantly switch to the shot that is ideal in that moment. I usually stay away from charms that give me an extra hit point and favor those that allow me to deal more damage, like coffee for example, as it constantly builds your super meter. I like the energy beam or milk kamehameha for my super because the damage output is unmatched. Now we're going to get to the more sophisticated tips that require a bit more effort and focus. Number 4. Learn your enemy's attack patterns. Each enemy has a limited number of moves per phase. As the boss encounter progresses, the boss's attack pattern will change drastically. It is of utmost importance to understand these changes and learn from your mistakes. Remember, you have an infinite number of lives, so don't be afraid to lose. Each loss is an opportunity to adjust your strategy and adapt to the chaos that surrounds you. Remember, the boss can only utilize a small number of moves per each phase. Learn these moves and commit them to memory. Now these next tips all tie together, so be sure to listen closely. Number 5. Understand hitboxes. Hitboxes are essentially the areas in the player character or an enemy character that when touched, receive damage. Having an advanced knowledge of the hitboxes will not only make you more difficult to damage, but it will make each attack on the boss much more significant. If you've been following along, tip number one was to always be snapping. In other words, always be firing blasts at the enemy. Careful placement of these shots will have devastating results if you pair this with the right type of shot. For example, using the spread shot on Beppy the Clown during his first transformation will completely decimate this phase and burst his bubble, no pun intended. Number 6. Always stay focused on the target. If you don't know who your target is, let me put it to you simply. It's the monstrous form on screen trying to kill you. Always keep your eyes on the boss so that your aim will be true. Remember to keep your finger on the trigger at all times, continuously firing at the target. Remember, you can't hit what you can't see. Don't get distracted by the visuals, focus on the objective at hand. Number 7. Situational Awareness In other words, know where you're at at all times and keep a mental note of any potential dangers in your immediate area. Keep in mind that throughout each boss encounter, the boss will try to minimize your save zone and place traps if possible, keeping you on the defensive in an attempt to prevent you from dealing damage in return. Deny them this opportunity and watch your placement in relation to any immediate and potential incoming threats. Number 8. Economy of Motion Don't panic and start running and jumping around like a maniac. That is precisely what the bosses are trying to force you to do. Erratic movement is actually easier to predict and allows for the bosses to capitalize on each of your mistakes. Remember, stay calm. Move only when you need to. Remember if you follow the previous step and are aware of any immediate threats, you can make each move that you make have purpose and meaning. Number 9. Farm Parries Simply put, 
In order for you to get out of sticky situations to build up your super meter, you will need to farm parries. This will not only help you score higher when trying to get the A ranking, but it will also provide you with more opportunities to use your EX blast during the boss encounters, and also your super. Remember, parries are typically not uncommon to come by in most battles, so don't get greedy and put yourself in a situation that could prove harmful to you. Number 10. Always output the maximum DPS on difficult sequences that you want to shorten. If you're not familiar with the term DPS, it stands for damage per second. Due to the phase system and the shared life bar that each boss encounter has, you want to be sure to maximize the damage you deal immediately before or during the most difficult sequences to you. This will significantly shorten the time you have to spend during that sequence and will result in less opportunity for you to take damage during that sequence if executed properly. So I know that was a lot of information, but let me sum it up for you really quickly and tie it all together so that it makes sense. Before going into any battle, be sure to equip Cuphead for the situation at hand. When you're engaged in the boss encounter, be sure to stay on the offensive and focus on the target. Quickly learn the attack patterns and don't panic during a transformation. Farm parries when possible and use your EX abilities and supers to maximize the damage you're dealing and shorten the sequence that you're having the most trouble with. Remember, precision is key here, so panicked movements will only cost you the precious little health that you have. Be sure to make each motion count, and most importantly, don't give up. Learn from each of your failures and adapt your play style. Now guys, I want to go ahead and share with you that Cuphead is an amazing video game and one of my all-time favorites, and that's saying quite a bit considering my experience with video games. I hope that by bringing these videos to you that you can also enjoy this masterful work of art and play it until your hands are numb. This game will make you a better gamer. I encourage anyone to willingly accept the challenge and best this game. Cuphead's approach to gaming is precisely what my channel is about. It forces you to improve yourself. So do yourself a favor and push yourself to the next level. And that's it for this video everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And stay tuned for more content like this. Plenty of lore and theories are on the way. And as always, it's the Inhuman One, signing out.